Hello, I'm Lauren James, the author of many science fiction novels, including most recently Green Rising, a climate change thriller, which I'm going to be reading a little extract from today. This is from the start of the novel, from the prologue, where we, we are introduced to our characters. There weren't many of them at first, just a few students standing outside the conference centre. Gabrielle lingered on the outskirts, trying not to give off the aura of someone skipping school. A girl in a pageant ribbon embossed with there is no planet B was painting blue and green spodges on people's cheeks. The protest had seemed like a good idea when Gabrielle had read about it online. A climate forum thread had suggested people protest outside the annual fuel summit taking place in the exhibition hall. The people who were contributing most to climate change were there, as the biggest energy companies in the world made deals to drill for more oil and open more power plants. But the crowd was just lingering around the car park, so none of the executives inside could even see them. It seemed such a waste after coming all this way. Gabrielle had to do something. She slipped away as a boy shouted into a megaphone, Hello, Climate Rebellion. Let me hear you repeat after me. Climate change is not a lie. Do not let our planet die. He draped a sheet over his shoulders like a cape, hand-painted with the words, Save our future in messy strokes. Heading around the rear of the building, Gabrielle hid her cardboard sign behind a overflowing waste bin. She tucked her school tie into her pocket so that her uniform looked vaguely like a business suit. Lingering around the staff entrance, she pretended to send a text. Faint shouts of, no more coal, no more oil, keep our carbon in the soil, drifted over from the car park. When a harried looking employee unlocked the door with their keycard, she slipped in after them. Head down, she moved along the corridor, adrenaline surging up her spine. As soon as she was alone in the network of corridors, she smashed a fire alarm with her elbow. A piercing alarm echoed down the empty hall. She followed the stream of staff out of the conference centre, where they joined up with the river of conference attendees. Hiding a grin, Gabrielle retrieved her sign from behind the bins and joined the group of protesters. This world is not for sale. Your pipeline plans will fail, she chanted at the annoyed crowd of evacuated oil executives. Even though this protest was only small, they had to make their voices heard whenever they could. The climate emergency was huge, an impossible crisis almost beyond solving. But if enough people in enough cities, in enough countries spoke up, then maybe someone would listen. Their voices were all they had right now. Most of the students here were too young to vote or make any real political difference. We will choose, we will decide, we will fight to turn the tide, she shouted, adjusting her grip on her sign. Pins and needles tickled her fingertips. Gabrielle had been six when she'd found out that the carbon emissions from burning fossil fuels were raising global temperatures. She'd assumed that the grown-ups were dealing with it back then. But even when wildfires burned up entire continents and hurricanes tore up coastlines, nobody seemed to be doing anything. Her planet needed Gabrielle's voice, because even though it was crying out for help, nobody was listening. There is no planet A, she mumbled, too late to correct herself. Her fingers were really aching from holding up the sign now. She kept losing track of the words. It was supposed to be Planet B. She swapped the hand holding the banner, rubbing her palm flat against her trousers. There was a throbbing pain as blood rushed back into her lowered arm. Her fingernails were pulsing, fire-hot blood beating below the skin in time with her racing heart. Stop denying that the earth is dying. There was something underneath her nail. Something green, twisting like it was trying to get free. Her fingernail felt like it was going to come loose. The chant changed to, Say it loud, say it clear, polar bears are dying here. As the green thing, insect, parasite, writhed beneath her nail. It curled upwards like it was searching for the light. Gabrielle's panic was replaced by fascination as the tendril thickened into a flat surface a leaf. When the air we breathe is under attack, what do we do? Fight back! What do we do? Fight back! The stem moved faster now, growing more leaves over her palm. Another strand burst from her thumbnail and another until vines covered her arm in a green seething mass of vegetation. It didn't hurt, not physically. She should be terrified. 
but somehow it felt good, like a release of pent up tension. The vines grew stronger, stems thickening and sprouting strong glossy leaves. They engulfed her banner, reaching up towards the sky. There were exclam exclamations of alarm as the vines wove through her hair. Someone started filming her as if the plant was some kind of art piece that Gabrielle had created especially for the protest. This was true and right and inevitable. This was what her hands were meant for. How had she not noticed that she could do this before? She was absolutely certain this was a good thing, not a danger at all. A gift. The other protesters, prote the other protesters circled her, shouting questions she couldn't answer. Even the fuel executives drifted closer to stare at her. Gabrielle swayed in the centre of the pulsating layer of green leaves, peacefully lost in a glowing haze of endorphins. Her sign remained valiantly upright under the weight of the plants. Its carefully painted message was still visible. It's time for a change. What you see is what you get, and you ain't seen nothing yet. She was calm. She was ready. The temperature was rising, but so were they. That was the prologue for my novel Green Rising. I hope you enjoyed it uh, if, and if you read the rest I hope that you enjoy seeing what happens to Gabrielle as she learns to control her plant magic.